Hey, top of the morning to you. I'm Michael, or as the grandkids call me, Rue. Thanks for joining me on Saturday morning. Can you believe it? I just looked at my calendar. I should do that more than once a month, twice a month anyway. It's um, it's the 30th of the month. Got to get ready for Yaya's birthday. That's coming up in a couple of days, and um, uh, we're going to be right here. Got an um, easy day, maybe, I'll cook a little dinner, and some a couple grandkids are coming over. Anyway, hope you're doing well this morning. Great to catch you. Uh, it is uh, it's Saturday morning, and Saturday mornings are just sort of loose, and you don't know what you're going to do. I don't really do. Uh, I know some of you are going to be very surprised to think that this guy actually sits down and does an outline for this show. <laughs> but, you know, I generally do, in all the looseness and the quickness and the um, simpleness that I do. It sounds like one of my rules, huh? Yes, I'm going to push that book. But my, my point is, is that uh, there really is a little bit of a, a plan behind the madness. I, I, I start off with a little bit of an outline. This looks like uh, today's show outline right there. See that? There's a, just a single page ripped out, upside down, nothing on the back. Just an idea. And uh, in fact, I had, a, I had an idea about numbers. You know, it's 857 and people say, why is it 857? And some of you already know this, who've been with me now for 207 days, 207, 207, 207 days today. Some of you wonder, I'm writing that down, um, w- wonder why 857. Some of you know 857. Here it is. It's just a little bit before nine. And so we just get a jump on the hour and that lets me bleed into, do you think I worry that this show's just one hour? No, no, no. That, that doesn't bother me. I'm just blessed that you watch it for five minutes, for 10 minutes, to stick with me for the hour. I'm just always blessed that you show up and be a part and that you're painting, that you're doing something creative, that you get your hands oiled up and uh, you got your coffee cup ready or your cup of tea drinking out of a rooster mug this morning. Coming down to the wire. Woo-hoo-hoo. All the first order is, um, is fading away. I have a few more in the box. I think there's probably... I don't know. I, and I may do another order and I may wait until way after next summer. I'm not sure. Uh, I think there's about s- seven or eight left, maybe something like that. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm really happy to have you guys drinking out of this mug. I love it. It's been my favorite mug so far. And um, it's the only one I've done. <laughs> but, you know, of all my mugs, and I have a collection of diner mugs, this one is really thick and it's really heavy. And uh, um, just... Uh, All right. Um, Hey, let me say hello to a few of you, and then here's what I'm going to do. Just because it's random, generally I say hello to a lot of people who uh, go on the show first, you know? And uh, you know that whole thing of the first should be last and the last should be first? So I I just think what I'm going to do is about every five minutes or so, uh, or every seven minutes maybe, I'm just going to uh, just uh, reach over, if I remember, that's why I wrote it down here, and I'll just call out a few names and say, oh, Thanks for coming on the show. So I can just catch your name on there. And I know this is not like I have to say hello to everybody, nor could I say hello to everybody, but I want to. I thank you for being here. And uh, so uh, Randall Taylor Craven, thank you for being on the show. Belinda, thank you. Catherine Brosseau. Is it Brosseau? Brosseau. It's probably Brosseau. 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 Uh, if you're from Louisiana. Chris Whitaker, thank you. Heather Kuhlman, thank you. Trish. Pat Thrift. Good night, Atlanta Couch. Kim Sheets, thank you. Brisk hello from the Appalachians. And it's, Appa- it's and people say, is it Appalachian? No, it's Appalachian. Okay, it's like opening a latch because you, if you live there, that's how the people say it. I lived there for over 12 years. Karen Binder, thank you for being on the show. Jason Nicholas, thank you. Happy Saturday. Jason was on the show last week talking about architecture and his sketches and drawings. And uh, I'll, we'll stay in touch with him because he's going to do something, I think, a little later in February coming up, just just on his own page live, and you can spring over and see him. Kay Spencer, we'll, um, Jason, I'll go back to that note. Uh, Elaine, thank you for being on the show. And Laura B, as in B, B-E-E, from Homeworth, Ohio. How much is Homeworth worth? It sounds like homework. I'd have a hard time living there because if I were the president, who would want to be? If I were president, the first thing I'd do is say no more homework, okay? Just just get kids in there and teach them in a fun way and then get the heck out of Dodge. And put them back in the jocular cornfields of Iowa, <laughs> uh, where the ears are listening. Uh, let's see. Do I know any uh, jokes? Um, what is a buccaneer? Huh? 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 What is a buccaneer? It's way too high a price for corn. There you go. Boom. I'll be here all week. 
I love the connection. Kathy Taylor, thank you for being on the show. And so every every five minutes or so, uh, I'm going to jump down and just say hello to some people that I might miss. Um, Jimmy Hazelwood, thanks for being on the show from just down the road in Charleston, South Carolina. Man, I love Charleston. I love the blacksmithing in that city. I love the architectural schools and the stonework. And I went down and interviewed with some people there to actually work with them some. Uh, there used to be an old blacksmith there. was just phenomenal. A lot of the city gates. But I love the art galleries in Charleston. They do an art crawl. Used to do it all the time. And we would go down and walk that street. That street had a rough time back when this country was uh, had people running rampart through the cities, throwing bricks and stuff like a bunch of Looney Tunes. And so, uh, but I love Charleston. Um, thank you, Barbara, for enjoying the hour with us. Pam Patterson, thank you very much for being on the show. Just skipping through some. Mickey Hupp, thank you for being on the show. Jenny Field, there you are. Good to see you. No, Jenny, good to see your picture on here. All right. Hey, let me jump on the desk here, Shot, and show you what I got this morning. And then I'm going to come back in a few minutes and say, hello, Burke, I saw you slide by there. Uh, Trina Seal, I don't know. Have I spoken to you before? I like your spelling of your name, T-R-E-N-A. Um, thank you for doing the videos from Fruta, Fruta, Colorado. I didn't even know that was a place. There's a lot of things I don't know about history. You know, what Carol says is we're watching TV. She goes, say it. And I go, I know you've been there. You've been there. Somebody had to stay home. That was me. Hey, here's the desk this morning. This is what you're looking at. A um, little, little person laying there. Let's just do one. I, I got, uh, this was thrown into my bag the other day by mistake. And then I went back and went, no, it wasn't a mistake. They charged me for it. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, it, um, it's a little piece of drawing paper, but I do feel bad about the young lady that was behind me that didn't, um, that didn't get home and went, oh, I wanted that. So uh, I, I, oh, here, here's my, uh, here's in, in the words of, here's here's one of my carrot people right here. Take a look. Just, just a little person kind of coming down here like this. So um, good day. All right. I like it when you take these little people like that and you uh, put them in your paintings and you just put, there's, he's got a red shirt on. Um, and then maybe some, uh, some turquoise britches. Woo. He's sporting. He must be going out to play golf out in the jocular cornfields. They'd be laughing at you out there. If you're out there hitting a golf ball this morning. All right. So let me, let me do this. I, uh, uh, Oh, who? Pat Brooks says, second vaccine. Wow, nausea, chills, fever, aches. I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. Hey, you hang in there, my friend. Uh, Pat uh, has just ha recently, a couple weeks ago, sent me a notebook of all the art for uh, Rue Rules, Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle, the book that uh, she's done all the art for, and I've been writing. I'm still writing. I went through 30 more pages yesterday, my 30 writings on these, or 35, or whatever it is. I'm on I haven't found the final number yet, but um, she's done the art for those. They're all scanned in, and um, we're in the process of laying that book out. Hopefully, have it done before the end of February. I'm like through the middle, maybe, but it takes longer than you ever think to do a project like this, okay? The the Hey, Roo Doodle, What's a Wheelbarrow? This book right here only took me 10 years to do because I had to learn how to paint before I did the illustrations. <laughs> hey, we'll talk about that book this morning. Got an idea to show you. In fact, because I was signing one yesterday or day before, um, I was going through the book, just looking at it, and I need to tell you guys something about this. Okay, let me let me put on a little music and just uh, kind of kill the evening here. <laughs> I um, when I wrote this book, I, I started doing the illustrations for it. I wrote, I wrote the, the poem first, and then I thought, this this breaks down into a children's book really well because it's about children asking questions. Hey, Rue, what's a wheelbarrow? And so then I got into this, and, and you know, all the, the whole concept is how creative can you be with things? So he takes them on a field trip around the, the farm, and there's always a – I want to say this, and I want you to hear this as – from my art class, I want you to hear it from 857. Just because I paint loose and quick and whimsical and messy – doesn't mean that you can't paint detail. Do you hear that? Just because you're loose and light and you put holidays in and you let things pop and and, and go shoop with a swipe and it doesn't mean you can't put in some detail. And does that detail have to be 100% correct? No, I'm going to show you an idea on that this morning. But it has to be creative. But like in all this page, 
If you look way down in the corners of my pages, there's a little grasshopper almost every page, and he has something to say that's sort of a turn line. It steps out of rhythm with the poem, but it's easy to get right back into it. Uh, wheelbarrows, what you put your tools in and loan to your neighbor. You know, it's not like bar and mustard and they don't bring it back. And then it's what you put vegetables in and it's a parade float and it's a stand. It's a poultry show. It's a cover and a thunderstorm. Wait, I'm going to get to my favorite. I was looking through it this morning, uh, last yesterday, because I was signing one for a friend uh, who purchased one. And uh, I remembered about, you know, I love painting roos and banjos. And so um, here they've made a hammock out of it and he's playing a lullaby. And uh, that made me think I needed to paint a banjo this morning because every now and then I do that. I'm going to paint this book a little later in the show. But uh, it made me think of this, and then that'll get me on to painting something this morning in detail. So here we go. Let me get up in the, the window here. Boom. There I am right there. This is uh, – here, let me just do this full shot. This this is not a very expensive banjo. It's just kind of a, a mediocre, uh, cheap banjo, inexpensive banjo. It's not cheap. I keep it hanging on the wall because uh, I, I, my my handmade banjo that I carried for years, um, I quit playing. And in, in 2003, 2004, um, Carolyn and I needed some, a little extra money for a son's wedding. And uh, that banjo had been handmade by a guy named Bud Sosby out of Asheville, North Carolina. I picked out all the wood. It was an open back pot. doesn't have a resonator on it. Uh, it was all, it was just so cool. Uh, curly bur bird eye maple neck with a piece of pecan through it or a piece of walnut through it. Anyway, I sold it and I sold it to a man in Tokyo yeah, who collects American folk instruments. So it turns out, and I followed up with him 10 years later and uh, he still has the banjo and plays it. I think I'd play it sometimes before I just leave it over there. My point is, I leave them over there because I love to draw them. And so uh, I was playing Cripple Creek there in the beginning. Crip going up, Cripple Creek going in a run. So I look at this banjo like this and I just take a little note of the hoop and the bell and the head and the bridge and uh, the tailpiece and the armrest and the keys and how the neck bends down. And so I'm looking at all that. And as I'm looking at it, that's all the detail that I need to see to hang it back on the wall and paint it. Okay? I don't need to know that each one of these are just perfectly little. I know they are on the banjo. They're made, they're machined to be like that. But when I'm sketching them, nobody's going to come up to your art and go, oh, he got the fourth one of these wrong. He painted it this way or that way. Nobody's going to care about that. If they do, they're, they're not interested in your art as art or art as storytelling. They're interested in you being a... Uh, a logo marketing person who says, I don't want any line or jot or tittle out of the way. In this case, you have this all kinds of uh, just uh, freedom to, to be loose, but freedom for detail. So let me show you what I'm talking about, okay? Can I just jump down here and see that? And um, yes, and Pat, we wish you the best. Start feeling better, my dear friend. Um, thank you for being on the show this morning. Um, and, and Jason says, instruments equal functional art pieces. Yeah, and they really do. There's a guitar there. There's two banjos. There's a mandolin hanging on the wall. There's my wire violin. I showed this the other day in the art show. Some of you may have seen this. This is my wire violin. Here it comes flying in. This is a sculpture I did out of just bent wire. And some of you sent me a couple sculptures that you did. Look at this. There is a, a fiddle that hangs over there. So this is probably more of a fiddle. And by the way, it has a real fiddle peg, a walnut fiddle peg, just sitting in there. Right there it is. And here's one. One day I was just walking down the road and picked up a stick. And while I was doing my walk, I just kind of, I don't know why I whittled that for, but I, that's what I do when I walk. So my point is, let me hang this back up if I can without breaking it. <clears throat> I wanted to paint a, uh, a ruin of banjo. So I did a little sketch out on it this morning. And uh, let me let me just let it happen here. I did a pencil sketch, light, light, light pencil sketch, um, and some detail. Um, so Ruth Ann Goaty, thanks for being on the show this morning, and Linda and Christine Fowler, thanks for being here. Um, Paulette Bob Hamilton, Paulette Hamilton, thank you for being here. Um, always a big surprise when you tune in with Rue. I'm the only one that's not surprised. But I love that people are surprised. There's a, something about that. Um, 
here we go. All right. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch the banjo first because that'll allow me to scale the rooster, which you can kind of see I've done here. So I'm just sketching from the side, going to make this very easy. I'm not going to do it ellipsoid or not even a circle, but, but get busy here and do this. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw these, um, these hoops. And you think, well, that seems backwards. Why are you drawing those first? That doesn't even seem smart at all. The reason is because it's going to break the headline up, okay? So these, these just have, have a little bit of thread on them like this. These are threaded little rods that hang down. So there in the midst of this sketch, there is some detail. And then I'm gonna come down and then I'm just gonna drew a little bit of a drop here. And then it's got a nut on the bottom. So there you go. And, and I'm just gonna simplify this for you and just show you how you see the detail, but it doesn't have to be uh, everything perfect in the whole world. Watch what I do. I'm gonna put another little block behind this like this. Bring this one down. And then, then the bottoms of these are are um, like they're they're nuts that have a little wrench that you can put on there and tighten up the the tailpiece with. And so these these little hoops hang over the head, which goes in between them like that. So that's why I had to draw them first. When you're drawing with a pen first, you got to think in layers. Doesn't it make you frustrated when you say, "Oh, I'm gonna draw this here," and you go, "Oh, I wanted this to cross that, and I've already crossed the lines here." So lighten up when it comes to the intersections. If you don't stop at a four-way stop, somebody's going to uh, runneth thou over. Okay, so we know the, the neck of the banjo drops down like this and then comes up. And you know the top of it breaks at this first fret right here. See, there's frets, there's all the parts of the banjo. And then you know there's a nut here that's called the top nut. And then, not a top knot. It could be, I guess. And then you're going to go down with the head like this, and it's going to have a couple breaks in it, like so. And it's going to have some post like this, another post there, another post there. Then you're going to have some gears on it and some keys like this. These two are going to come down, and there's one on that side. There's another one over there. There's the four. If it's a five-string banjo, it's going to have another one right here. All right, so there it is. And I love to put a little neck run right across here. I think you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to, I'm going to actually get a little closer here so you can see this sketch so i'm just sketching over my pencil lines here you go Whoop. focus and hide okay there we go left that hide in there to remind me to show you a close-up here it is so i'm just going in like this kind of come in and then this is going to break into the neck right there all right so basically i've just drawn a banjo all right um so <clears throat> Yeah, so Jason caught on it there. I said, look, even in loose painting, you can have detail, but the detail doesn't have to be as detailed as you think you need to detail it. That sounds like a rule. <laughs> Sometimes I'll put on some acoustical music or banjo. It's, it's hard to paint a banjo when you're listening to Mozart, Mozart or Bach. So in this case, so now I have my banjo scaled down and there's some other things I'm going to add in this banjo. Like I'm going to go right in here and I'm going to add I'm going to add the bridge, which is right here, and it, it comes down like this. It comes down and it has a little leg on it. Then there's a tail piece that sticks up like this on the banjo. How do I know this? Because I play one. It's got a little piece there. And I'll add some strings in a minute when I put the uh, the rooster in there. But you see this, this banjo. And by the way, I'm painting on, or I'm sketching on Kilimanjaro, 140-pound. Uh, and I'm seeing uh, some of you say, what's the matter with that guy? This is the hardest paper in the whole wide world to sketch on, to work with. No, nah, it's not. Just get used to it. Hey, listen. 857. What does it mean? It means we start a little before 9. Also, add it up. 857 equals 20. 758 equals 20. 578 equals 20. 758 equals 20. You get 20. If you sketch, paint, draw, think like an artist at least 20 minutes a day, your world in art's gonna change. I'm telling you, it's gonna change. Some of you have already proved it. I get emails every week, sometimes every day, from people who say, I could not paint, I couldn't do anything. I saw a note yesterday, someone sent me a little bicycle and said, here's the first five, I've got 40 something more to go. I'm gonna do 50 of these until drawing a bicycle is just natural. Just wrote, no pun intended, that's, R with, that's wrote with an R, not wrote with a W, okay? 
Jesse Scott, thank you for being on the show this morning. Blessings to you. Jancy lives in the southern part of the United States, down where they make good gumbo, and she has a roux collection. She has a lot of shrimp too. You have a lot of some of my some of my first shrimp I started painting um, years ago. You've been you've been a fan of roux noodles. I appreciate you very much. Uh, Jancy came through. Uh, Janice came through. Uh, I call her Jancy just because it's fun. Janice came through. Um, no, 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 no. I have you confused with uh, the other Janice. Anyway, I was going to say, maybe you need maybe you need a shrimp. Uh, just found a banjo emoji. Okay, I'm not going to use that, but I thank you for putting it on the show. So, Cheryl Bullard, thank you for being on the show. And Jessica Miller, uh, the Rudel Riddle. I'm not sure what that is, but if you like it, thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, I know what it was. It was the, the Rudel Riddle. Detail, detail. All right, here we go. Let me keep going on this because I want to get it done for you here. And I might do another one. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm, I've, I've been pencil. I've sort of scaled my my rooster. And I'm thinking if he were a medium-sized, rough little bandy picker or maybe even a small roux, he could sit on the head of a banjo. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to keep him this size. I'm not going to enlarge him too much. So I'm going to paint his bill here. There it is right there. Give him a little bit of a, a lima bean looking waddle down there. And then maybe a little eyelash like this. A little frustration on there. That eyelash can always give you some frustration. Isn't that kind of fun how that works? And then here's where I'm going to just do some rough lines. Look at this. I'm just kind of playing here a little bit. I like this. Remember, I penciled this in, but does that mean anything to me? No, it doesn't. It just gives me an idea of where all this is going to go probably. And then I'm going to reach back here and get part of this leg, and I'm going to bring it in and, and throw a big old toe right there and another one right here, and then maybe the third one out here. And put this one back as an anchor. So he's almost setting down low. That leg is tucked back underneath. And then I'm going to have this leg come out underneath like here and go up. And then I'm going to have it bent over, maybe a toe here. Maybe this one goes right here. This one in the back. So there we go. So that's that's pretty loose there. Um, put that there. Give us some little wiry feelings around here. Maybe a couple of these feathers this hackles coming in right there just a little bit i'm still just sketching with a pentel uh 05 um inner gel pen pentel inner gel 05 okay i love how these pens sketch i gotta tell you i love these pens and and they're they're hard to find you know where i bought this one harris teeter <laughs> i never can get past the yogurt aisle and i turn left and head up uh and, and there they were hanging in their little office supply section, Intergel. And I'm going like, all right. I just bought them locally. Okay. So so what's this guy talking about? Where's the story come in in all my art? Got to have a story somewhere. So so for me, it's these two guys right here. It's these little peeps, and they're all just standing down here, or maybe small little roosters that are just sitting out here. My, my peeps and small chickens all sort of look alike. wonder why that is. Because... It's my style. It's how I started. When you start drawing cats and dogs. By the way, uh, let me say hello because it's been my seven minutes. Pat Hahn, uh, Normandale, thank you. Um, uh, Jessica Miller, thank you for being on the show. Carol Tard Mundy, thank you. Uh, Ruth, uh, thank you. Ruth, I'm going to try your last name. Get G. Get J? Get G. Okay. Uh, Peeps are always funny. Picking and a grinning, uh, Javine McCabe says. Is it Javine? I like that. That's pretty cool. It sounds very French, Javine. So good morning to you. Uh, oh, from Buffalo. Whoa. You know what separates Buffalo from Siberia, right? A screen door. <laughs> I told that to my friend who, uh, who actually came down from Siberia or came in the stage from Siberia many years ago. You know what it's like to live where you live? You live in Buffalo, New York. I live in Charlotte. You're you're like, and she was from Siberia. She goes, some days this place feels like Siberia. You know, like, yeah, well, I can't talk to you about that. All right, so what I've got here, see this little, see this little rough, um, little rough painting there. That's a cool little painting, huh? This is on nine by twelve paper. Um, Cold pressed, pure rag cotton. I think it's probably what I call um, original bright white. 
And I try to go bright white, the brightest white I can go. And here's the reason for that. When you scan bright white, if I wanted to turn this into a print or a T-shirt, which I don't um, because I do originals, but uh, we have been doing prints for the book. Um, When I did some prints uh, a few years ago, I want to turn this into a print. I want the whitest paper I can actually paint on to give me that scan to throw the background out. Because if I have to go pick it out other paint, it just won't print well. All right. All right, so there you go. There's a... Just sketching in here and having fun with the background. Maybe put some fret bars in here like this. You know, they're closer together down here than they are on this end. Of course, Benjo's tuned into key of G. All right, let's paint this thing. What do you say? 25 after. That means I get to uh, jump on and say hello to Dorina Tan. Good morning to you and Laura Abbott. Caught you live again. Yay. Usually Saturday mornings I'm here. Jacqueline Browse, nice to see you. Um, Julie Walden, good morning to you. All right, here we go. I'm just going to grab a... Uh, I'm just going to grab this. Uh, my, one of my favorite brushes is a uh, number one bamboo. There it is. A little piece of bamboo with some goat hair in it. Everybody loves that, but the goat. I'm also going to pull this. Uh, let's see. What I, what will I pull? I'll pull a number six right there's a number six brush. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to. I've got this number 10 out here just to show you how I'm going to use that. And then I'll probably go a little detail with this number four right there. So that's my brushes I'll use this morning. I don't need that many brushes out here on the desk. In fact, I could paint the whole thing with this, but because I'm doing a little detail, I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. I do think I'm gonna do a brace support right here underneath this banjo. Listen to him, put a brace support in here. Come back and put some wear and tear on that. All right, so here we go. Let's uh, let's see what happens if uh, if we come into this. This banjo could have a back ring over there if we wanted to, and I could put some of that in later. There you see it. Now you got now you got him actually standing up on the head of the banjo. See, all these little things don't need to tie in, but it's okay because you you want it to work and go. Oh, there's a rooster playing a banjo, and that's weird enough already. Right, I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down because if I started painting down here, then my hands in it, right? Uh, does your copy? Yes, uh, Dorothy. I saw. Let me let me respond to this real quickly. <clears throat> Dorothy, you sent a copy of Lian Zen's book, um, and I think it's animals. Maybe watercolor animals had a cat in the front, and so I blew that up. I pulled it up and looked at it. Yes, I have two original Lian Zen's when I painted with him. I have a Lian Zen print, or excuse me, an original painting that's been given to me. Uh, it's his cranes. In, in my wife's book that I took for her, he painted a crane in the front. He's the one that got me into, if I ever have a book, a children's book, I'm going to autograph it with a painting. And so that's what I do. Uh, I put my book on his desk. I said, Liam, would you would you sign this for me? And he said, yes, put it, put it there. And I said, just, I know you're in a hurry. Just sign it. He said, no, no, no. I signed with a photograph or a painting. And I'm going like, do what? And so he does, he signs with an original piece of art and I go, and I made it, I made this comment to him like 11 years ago. I said, if I ever do a book, if I ever paint a, if I ever write a children's book, which there's some locked in there, um, my first one, I'm going to paint an original in the front. If people order them from me, you get one painted original. If you order the book from Amazon, you just get it, it ships to you and it just looks like this. There it is. A little 30 page paper book. that has got a great story. It does have a recorded voiceover that I've got to send you a new link to. It was on my old website. It's where my grandkids came in the studio here, and we set up all the microphones, and we read through the book uh, several years ago. So fun to do, and it's out there. So when a rooster crows, your kids can turn the page, your grandkids. Your book, uh, Dorothy, is uh, uh, looks like an original signature to me. I went down, and I compared that to my books and I do think that's his original and by the way and he paints those so quickly I mean he literally just takes it and goes here and then he signs it uh, he doesn't put his stamp he leaves that for his studio work <clears throat> but you see that signature that's kind of a over like this and then that's Leon's as, as uh, looks looks original to me or somebody did a great um, but I'm, I'm going on that's uh, I'm going on that's an original so I love it. So you found a, a great little book there. And by the way, if you want to go to his uh, site, 
and send him a note and say, hey, my gosh, um, I, I, I bought this book. Don't tell him that you bought it for $12 on eBay. You say, hey, I found this book in a, in a bookstore and uh, it looked like you had been here and signed it. And uh, how fun is that? He'll probably respond. Sometimes I have emailed him. I emailed him last year, and I think he, uh, <clears throat> in fact, I'm sure he responded. We had a little talk about painting roosters, and he inspired me to stay loose and to keep doing uh, my, my whimsical style. He said, you know what? You're going to be uh, a loose, whimsical illustrator. And I go, yeah, I came in here. I put that on my uh, jury thing when you saw it. Loose, whimsical. He goes, yeah, you got yourself. I said, well, I've been doing this for a few years already, and I was pretty excited about just having somebody else affirm me. And sometimes that's what we do in a painting class. Um, have four classes so far of this January, February class. Got four to go. And, uh, man, had some fun with the folks already, getting them to do things over and over and over again. Uh, and that's the homework. So someday you can go, hey, this guy pushed me to paint. All right, I put a little, uh, did you see what I just did there? I took a Lamy fountain pen right here. I just took this Lamy fountain pen, and I just put some ink up in here like this. Nick, thanks for being on the show. Um, my laser pointer is almost impossible to see. I don't know what that is, but... Um, all right. Uh, All right, so I'm going I'm to throw a little bit of uh, purple down in the bottom end of this root, just to have some break up a color in there. I just like the contrast. And of course, you know, I got to have some French blue in the feathers. And I'm just pushing those in. Those of you who see me paint lots of times go, you know, that guy doesn't really worry about staying in the lines. You go, no kidding. Okay. Uh, what are the lines for? This is to show me where the rooster is going to sit on the page. That's kind of what I like. Got to have a little turquoise underneath here. Just a tad. And then this roux is going to just get some water right in here. And I'm just going to throw a little bit of this uh, gray and a little bit of this rust. Uh, maybe it's uh, gold. I don't know what color it is. I don't really care. I like that, though. <laughs> if I worried about, is this, this the right color or this the right color? Or should I use this color? Or should I use this color? I'd go, hey you're worried about this way too much. This is just a piece of paper. Just do, this is, this is going to be one of five or 10 you might do. Have fun, move on, go on. Okay. Right, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and I'm going to drop it in a pan here like this. Yes, uh, Karen, I threw that in there for Terry Tardy, the turquoise. It's really called Andrew's turquoise. But since I started painting 207 days ago, um, I call it Terry Tardy Turquoise just because Terry is uh, Terry and her husband were with Carol and I in Orlando and 5,000 other of our closest friends. <laughs> and I'm not making that number up. That's just a little more than 5,000. And we were there and uh, it was uh, on a conference and she talked about being a potter and... Uh, and I said, well, I paint roosters because, you know, it's low maintenance. And then she's been on the show, Terry Tardy from Coos Bay, Oregon. And so we just became friends and I started following up. And she got on the show and has an unbelievable sketchy hand, by the way. Uh, Terry Tardy can paint. So all I'm doing now is I'm just dropping a little different color in the beaks. Does, does that look exactly like a little peep? It doesn't matter doesn't matter. I could paint him blue if I wanted and say he's been out in Buffalo. He's got a blue nose, you know, cold up there. It's past the red stage, it's blue. I want a little bit of green in here. I think I got some green missing. I think I just need a spot of green on this rooster's tail somewhere. So what I like about these uh, bold colors, I'm, I'm painting with American Journey colors, is that I like the, how they run together and I like the contrast. I like the tonal contrast between this purple bleeding into that blue I'm probably going to come back and touch this with a little black right here and just do some detail up in there like that and let that fade in. Maybe a touch of black right here. This is lamp black. It's American Journey paint. Uh, comes in tubes like this. And then I just squeeze them into the... There's my purple. This is a new color. This is Royal Amethyst. I shouldn't call it purple. It's Royal Amethyst. Amethyst. 
You have to be Norman Thayer who wrote on Golden Pond or... All right, so, Red Skelton. All right, so another thing I want to do is uh, maybe put a little... I want this. Uh, I want the, the body of this banjo to be... Um, I'm, I'm going to use a different brush for that. I want this body of this banjo to be maybe this color right here. Let's see if this is what I want. So now I'm just, I am searching for a little bit of a color because I just want to look at it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop this right here and maybe, no, that's not what I want. Maybe with a little bit of yellow in it. Yeah, maybe that is what I want. I think maybe that color has just got some green blow by in it. That's really not a clean green or clean uh, straw. Oh, that's better. That's better right there. Okay, that was the color I want. All right, so I'm just going to drop in here, and I don't even know what color this is. So um, there, how's that for being a fine art show? What color are you using there? The color that I wanted. That's the color I'm using. Don't you love that color? It's a great color. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to let a little bit of this come in between these um, locks. These are head locks. Uh, not to be confused with wrestling show, but this is a, this are the little bolts that hold the head down. You got to squeeze the head down. The first banjo I ever saw was um, an old man that I grew up uh, in East Tennessee, and he and I would meet in the woods sometimes with their rifles, and we would sit under trees and wait to pick off a few squirrels because when I came home from school, I put my clipboard in the mailbox because I didn't do any homework. No homework rule. If you got me all day at school and you can't teach me, don't expect me to go home and feed 26 dogs and weed the corn and cut okra for my mom and still do homework. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. And so uh, it meant that I made some C's. Okay, a lot of C's. I made a few B's. <laughs> and I made an A. In, uh, I always made an A in shop. But... Uh, But I would go down and meet Boomer, and Boomer had a banjo. And one day we went, we came out of the woods near Boomer's old house uh, down on Keller Bend Road. This is all the true story. And he said, uh, oh. I said, Boomer, I said to him first, I said, Boomer, is that a banjo? And he goes, yeah, you want to see it? He brought it out, and it was an old hoop and ring that looked like it had been maybe store-bought at one time. It didn't have too many stays on it or locks locking the head down. And he said, uh, uh, I said, and he picked it up and it went boom. It sounded, it, it, it didn't ring like, like this banjo rings, right? It, it sounded like this. It had a real, uh, it had a real thump, thump, thump. And I said, what is that? And he said, well, the head needs to be tightened up. And I said, what is this? Because it looked like it looked like it had some hair on it. And I said, he, he said, that's groundhog. Kill that groundhog, get him myself and stretched him out. And I'm going like, oh my gosh, who are you? And um, I went home and told my dad, dad, Boomer's got an old banjo. And he goes, with a groundhog head. And I'm going like, you seen it? Why didn't you tell me? He goes, nah. He said, it doesn't sound good. And I go, no, but I want that banjo. But I never got that banjo. So, uh, um, I mean, I, I didn't want to go steal it. I just wondered. I'd like to have it. That would have been fun. Now, I'm going to change the shape of the color of the neck a little bit here. I'm just going to go in and put a little bit of pecan in there. Is that pecan? It's pecan because I said it is, not because it's really pecan. Um, but it looks a little bit like pecan or mahogany. But I don't care for mahogany in instruments too much it's it's good uh i like rosewood so i could add a little bit of rose in there and put some rosewood in there that would have probably been nice but i don't think a chicken a rooster would be playing a rosewood banjo i do like this color right here to do the head a little bit how am i doing on time i'm pushing it this morning but hey i'm doing something that's a little more detail <coughs> i'm getting there though take a look hot dog Come in with this uh, ultra fine flare and just kind of scratch in some more earth here like this. Give myself a little shadow all the way out. I like this. Uh, you can use a, um, don't have one on the deck right now, but you can use a small paper mate fine tip flare for this. Going to give you some great little earth tones. I like to ground my paintings uh, so that it looks like they're sitting somewhere, sitting on something. And I'll go in here. I usually do this last, but just so you can see it, I am rushing this painting. Um, 
It's really a German painting, but I'm rushing it. Boom, shh, I'll be here all week. Come in with a little bit of green on top of that blue. Is that cool? That's a great way to make the earth. See, I just let the pen bleed, and then I'm going to come in with a little bit of uh, maybe just a little what I call uh, dirty earth here. I call it East Tennessee mud. Um, Neil Mallory Brown is what I usually call it. Neil Mallory, by the way, is a banjo player. He's been on this show quite a bit. He drops in from time to time, lives in Knoxville, Tennessee, behind the high school that I went to. Um, I did go to high school. I just didn't do any homework. Went to college, went to University of Tennessee for about three months and then said, I got to get the heck out of here because uh, they're supposed to be teaching me TV and all I've seen is Western civilization. And I said to them, I don't care when the Babylonians deported. Someday I might. But right now, it doesn't really interest me and you're killing me. And so I took my banjo and my rifle and I moved to the mountains of Western North Carolina. Been a tough struggle ever, ever since. <laughs> been blessed, been blessed, been blessed. All right, so there you go. Let's take a look. So now you got the, now you got a little banjo. Boom. Moving to Tennessee this fall. Let me say hello to a few folks. Sheila Hunt, thank you for being on. Uh, Lori Stanley Henderson, I didn't say Handelmeyer. I didn't say hello to you this morning. Uh, Valerie uh, Prezi, thank you for being on. Shanoa, thank you. Jimmy Hazelwood. Pecan or pecan? I would prefer eating a pecan instead of a pecan. Does that that just doesn't sound good to me? So pecan is what I've known it for is in the South. Okay. All right. So there you go. Solve that right there, huh? I got 24 American Journey watercolor for. Oh, look at you! Wow. And this is American Journey paint. I lo I love it. Here's why. I love it because it's smooth. I like it because the pigments are bright. And I started with it, and I just didn't stop. Have I painted with other colors? Yes, I painted with Rembrandt. I painted with Daniel Smith. I painted with Van Gogh. I painted with Holbein. Uh, they're they're all good. You can paint. You know, don't go out and buy just what the guy on the TV is painting with. You know, you don't have to do that for heaven's sakes, folks. But if you if you this paint for my style is good. If I'm doing and what am I doing here? I'm doing I'm doing animals. All right, I'm done with this painting. Except for some detail, watch this. I'm going to come in here, and uh, you, did you notice something missing? I did. Some strings on the banjo. All right, so look. Look at this. So it's got to go to the bridge, so I'm just going to take those strings and just put them in here like this. Run this one down here. Run another one down here. Then I'm going to run one up through here and down this way, and then one up through here and over this way. So he's plucking it. See that? Take a look. <laughs> I come back in now and do a little more detail on this. And when it dries, I might come back and do a little more just for fun. I might put, I might put a pinhead right here. I might put some little lines on this to show that the head's pulled in and stretched. I might put some dots in here. I'm probably going to come in with a brush like this and grab a little bit of Payne's gray. That's this gray that's right here in my under my big old fat head, and just tap a little bit of dirt in here like this. Maybe some on the banjo, maybe some on the roux. I like to come in with a little red sometimes and just touch him with a little bit of this red. Watch this. Just put a couple spots of red up in the roux. Uh, Lin Zen, you talked about him. He called that or, or uh, he called that a beauty spot. I just put a beauty spot on there. Uh, I will come in with a little bit of blue and just, just splatter around here a little bit like this. Just randomly turn my paper a little bit so all my hits don't look the same. And I got a little bit of splatter going on there. And I basically need to give this a caption. And uh, I think he's going to be saying, boys, you better put your fingers in your ears. I'm about to tear one loose here or something. It's going to be something that those boys would say when they sit down and get ready to play. They always say, all right, boys, back up the truck. We're taking off. Did you ever watch the old Andy Griffith show? You remember that show? Remember, remember the Andy Griffith show when... Uh, Oh, my gosh, when uh, the Dillards used to come to town, you know, uh, Rodney Dillard and his brothers, they were the, the, the Dillards. The Dillards would come to town. They were in the back of an old pickup truck, and they'd be playing. Dooley, and then holler, Dooley, and, and Charlene was there, and uh, they would all be playing and singing, and I poured myself a cup of tea here. So see me reaching over here looking that way. I hate to pour tea in my paint, but I've done it. 
okay? And I've also dipped my brush in my teacup. I've done that lots of times too. It's non-toxic. Just, <sighs> whoa, the thermos. Love that story, the thermos. How do it know? Hot or cold? We were in Atlanta Southeastern Music Hall. Uh, went there to see somebody. Went there a couple times. Went there to see John Hartford, meet him one night. And uh, So after the show's over, you sit on the floor. They lean you against a seat, a bench part. So you just sit on the floor. They, I remember uh, they serve beer in a bucket, literally. And so you sit down on the floor thinking, oh, my gosh. Because people start rocking and clapping and stomping and buckets of beer turn over. So you're, you really sit in the beer is what you sit in. But uh, it was just one of those times in the 70s. And these guys were playing up front. And I went, I recognize these guys. And so I went up and spoke to them and I said, uh, I know you guys are the Dillards. And I know Rodney Dillard, I love your electric banjo. And I know you did stuff on all these uh, musical things and your natural. I knew I knew about them because I read about them. But I said, I know more than that. You guys were the Darlin family that used to ride in the truck. And he goes, you got us, man. So that was the Darlin family used to come through town. He said, we were told not to smile. And we just drive through town in the truck. <laughs> and so uh he had electric banjo, so I came back and, you know, thought I'd soup up my banjo and all kinds of stuff like that. All right. So, there we go. Um, uh, you're not even looking at the page. I'm back on my headshot here. Sorry. Got carried away. So, there's the painting this morning. I'm going to put a, a caption on that. I, I probably will come in here somewhere with a pen that I think is kind of creative. And I think I'm going to go right here and just go RueDoodles.com, M from Michael, and a 21. You know, I painted that. Uh, I'm I'm over 21, but I'm also um, painted in the year 21. And then what I might do is come back with this uh, Pentel Intergel pen right here that I'm sketching with, and just put in a little bit of some some detail veining up here in in this. Look at that; it's just coming coming back in. I can come in here, and then what I'll do too is when this dries a little bit more, I'll come back. Well, I can almost do it now; it's just about dry. I'll come back and I'll put a little bit of this one's too wet. I'll, I'll put some detail in the feet. And I'm going to pick up that eyebrow a little bit right there and come in. Um, if that's too much ink in the tail, like right here, see where I just, you can't really see that line, but there's a little line there. If I think that line, line is too heavy, I'll come back and just wipe a wet brush over that and soften it right up. That's what I love. That's what I love about pens that bleed. They soften into the watercolor. The ink runs into the pigment. And so... Uh, I kind of just like that. That's my personal style. That's not something that I teach in class and say, you have to do this. No, but I do find that sometimes if you're just doodling, some of those sketches are going to be some of your great work. Okay. All right. Um, how fun is that? Huh? I'm going to paint another one. Uh, this was on 140 pound Kilimanjaro. Uh, let's see here. Susan Peters, I didn't say hi to you. Thank you. It's been seven minutes. Sue Harrison, thank you for joining the show. Elise McQuillum, thank you for being on the show. Annette says, T-shirts, uh, La Perusa. <laughs> La Perusa. La Perusa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jessica Miller says, my son wants to move to Tennessee ever since he found out Rue is from there. I'm telling you, it's a great place to be from. No, you know what? I, I love it. I love uh, the East Tennessee Hills. I love the Smoky Mountains. Wow. Did some work at... Uh, Silver Dollar City, Gold Rush Junction didn't turn to Silver Dollar City, didn't turn to Dollywood, did some storytelling and work there. Not as much as my friend Ash, but it would go there from time to time. Uh, all right. Plucking and clucking. I love it, Amy. Good thinking. All right. Where's the grasshopper? <laughs> Is it a picking chicken? See what's happening to you? You're getting on the train here. Okay, chicken train, running all day, running all night. That was the Ozark Mountain Daredevils. All right, here we go. Got a little bit more time. I'll show you what I was going to do. I was going to do a piece on hot press. That was cold press paper. This is Fabriano hot press. Uh, and I sketched out a little rule on a banjo here. I'll finish both these up and I'll post them today. I might even auction them off. That'd be kind of fun. Um Let's see if I can sketch this one out already. And he's going to be different. Here's He's going to be standing up. There's his beak right there. There's his big old waddle. Um, he's, um, he's the leader of the band. I can see that coming right now. You can see it already, right? Look at this. He's got his foot down here. He's got his foot on what we call... Uh, 
affectionately in the South, a gut bucket. The gut bucket, of course, would be um, a, a number three, number five, probably a number three wash tub. And um, it, it would, uh, see, I drew his foot first, and then I put the bucket underneath there. And that's how you get about worried about lines. I knew his toes had to hang over. I know it didn't seem like I'm thinking ahead, but I'm thinking like an artist, okay? So I stopped the lines there. I can always come back and put those in. And, you know, wash tubs have lines in them like this, and then they have, if this wash tub were upside down, it would have a, a three right there. See that? Now the three's upside down. So I just turn my paper upside down. People say, you know, you're, you're just loose. You don't tape your paper down. And I go, if I tape it down, then I'd have to turn upside down or I'd have to paint the three in reverse. And that's just so dead gum confusing when I can just turn the painting around. You see, simple is good. Okay, what is a wash tub? What is a gut bucket? <laughs> well, it's where you... You put the chickens down in there most of the time and you... Uh, You scalded them in there in a hot, hot uh, tub, and then, but that's really where you put all the other stuff that you need to go throw away later down or bury. Yeah, so, um, so they're having a little discussion about bass. Gut, a gut bucket is one of the first original bass instruments that uh, old people used to play. That turn over the bucket that had all of the. The, the, the beans in it from the garden and they had a, a ring on the top and they just tie a broom handle or a shovel handle on there with a piece of string and then you go doo, 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 doo. came your bass came the bass it's all about the bass right this guy here he's he's your tuning pig right there the farther he pulls back the tighter the string gets the higher the note is look at what I just said Okay, so look at this. I'm just going to go in here now. I'm going to draw this banjo right here. There it is right there. Then I'm going to draw another ring on this banjo right here because it's a double ring banjo like this. I'm going to come down. Should have probably left a little spot there, but I got it. And then I'm going to go up here like this. I'm going to drop in for the fifth peg. It comes up. Then I'm just going to open this thing up and just do a headpiece like this, almost like I was doing a, a violin head. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Little five string right there. Don't see those keys. Put the Put the frets on. Um, put the bridge on right here. There it is with the feet. Put the tailpiece on here. Come down. Um, don't need to string this yet. See anything missing? Oh, yeah, his tail feathers. Well, they can be over here. I'll just let those kind of come out. Right now, he's, uh, he's just letting it rest here a little bit. He's got his uh, other wing out here ready to tune and play. Got a strap on the banjo coming down over one shoulder. Did you know that? Your banjo strap just goes over one shoulder. You don't have to put it over your head unless you're dancing while you play. So there it goes. That gives you another little banjo. Um, the Darlings. Yes, the Dillard family was the Darlings. So don't confuse those. So it was the original Dillard family. Look it up. The Dillard family was the original Darlin family on Mayberry. And then uh, she wasn't even part of it. She was just a, uh, an actress that they brought in and uh, who would sing. Oh, sing. Um, what is, is she always saying? Uh, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Can't remember the song. Somebody's going to tell me in a minute. Well, she said, that makes me cry. She would always say, don't sing that one, Paul. It makes me cry. <laughs> I love how you say what I might do is, and then you do it right then. <laughs> Terry Tardy, I've been talking about you on the show. I might do this. That's because I don't know which comes first, the sketch or the idea. <laughs> I love it. I might do this after I've done it because I'm just thinking of this on the fly. Look, here's... Uh, you know how you really get good at art if uh, some of you were to do this show? If you were to come and sit in my chair and do this show... You go, I, I, I better think fast. <laughs> so you have to be a little ADD, ADHD, which we call fast brain in the real world. Why would you ever want to tell a child he's ADD or ADHD? You don't. That sounds like a stigma, doesn't it? That sounds so. But if I say to my grandson, you are fast brain. And he goes, really? Really? What's that mean? I goes, that means your brain fires a million 
ways in a million times a second. It means that you probably frustrate some teachers in school. It means that you probably uh, will get moving on something and suddenly shift over here and start doing something else. And then before you're done, you've done five other things. He goes, yeah. I said, it means you're probably interested in this, 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 and this, and this. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. But there's times that you'll have to focus on one of those to make it happen. That's fast brain. Most people grow out of that. Some have to be medicated in some ways to do that. But I have focused on the things that I like to do. Like today, I'm spending the entire day in my shop. And I don't want it to sound too glamorous because I've just got to clean it up. I know in there somewhere there's a workbench. I've seen it. But it's it's about three feet deep right now. And I got to find it because I've had a lot of projects going. All right, I'm going to paint one more painting and then I'm done. I'm going to finish this painting and I'm going to post both of these today as a mere symphony of, uh, of banjo paintings because I was inspired this morning when I came in here, saw my banjo hanging over there. Uh, it was a little later. I walked in this morning. Didn't know what I was going to paint on Saturday morning. The sun was kind of coming around the corner and uh, the banjo was sort of shining, saying, pick me up, play a tune. I'd like to hear you make this room ring. All right. I'd love to play some of my favorite banjo music, but I can't have to play this production stuff simply because... Well, somebody says, hey, you use my music without permission. So I honor those guys. All right, so here we go. Do you spray anything on the finished paint to protect them from bleeding? No, just don't put your... <laughs> John Hartford used to do a song called uh, Don't Leave Your Records in the Sun. Don't, don't leave your records in the sun. The warp and they're no good for anyone. Don't leave your records in the sun. The sun makes them all wavy and it just won't play. 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 No more. My point is, take your watercolor paintings. I don't spray anything on them. Uh, I think sometimes if you're not careful what you spray on these paintings, you will affect the color, the water, and everything. So are there treatments? Yes. Read about it and be careful. Don't do it on the, your favorite painting. I don't. I say frame it well. Put it in a piece of glass. Non-glare if you have to hang it in a bright sunny room. Keep it out of direct sunlight. And I have paintings that I painted 15, 12 years ago because uh, I hadn't been painting 15 years. But I have some watercolors that were painted 15 years ago by other people. They still look fine. Will they fade over time? Yes. So do we. You should see how I have faded. <laughs> so, all right. I uh, love the gray, purple, and the blue tail feathers. I know, didn't that turn out well? Look, I just, just discovered that right then. Hey, thank you, Julie. Julie says, I love the book that you and Carol wrote, The Garden Path. Read it every morning. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. And by the way, those stories are true stories of our uh, our family. Hey, let me uh, let me sign this book and tell you about my books. And I'm going to repaint this. Before I leave here this morning, I'm going to paint this. This is on. This is going to be a different looking painting. It's going to be more water spotted because it's slick paper. It's, it's hot press. Um, paint rolls a little faster off of it. Dries differently. We'll leave some hard edges. I kind of like that sometimes. I just like to mix it up a little bit. This uh, book is called Hey Roo, What's a Wheelbarrow? You can find it on uh, heyroo.com. Uh, there it is right there. That's me in the actual wheelbarrow uh, that's still in my backyard. It's an old green wheelbarrow. There's, there it is on the left little lower. And my, um, maybe it's the right lower on your, your uh, screen, but because uh, I'm backwards here. Um, my, my grandkid would say, hey, Roo, what's a wheelbarrow? And I'd go, well, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a parade vehicle. And they'd go, what? So yeah, everybody hop in. So uh, anyway, so uh, got to, now you got to put a hole in mama's wash bucket. Yeah, and you do. Uh, there's a way to do that, though, with some plumber's putty and a couple big washers. And it won't ever set level again. So we just had our designated um, gut buckets so we didn't tear up hers every time. But, you know, the neighbors already had one that was leaking, so we just get that one. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to show you what I do when I – sorry – here it is right here. Here's what I do when I uh, sign the books. If you order a book from Wash Tub equals Gut Bucket, that's it. If you order a book from uh, Amazon, you can just type in Amazon, hey, Rue, what's a wheelbarrow? It'll come to you. And I, I, I've got three more children's book ideas that are coming. And then Pat and I are working on a book that's called Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle. You noodle it, you doodle it, you fiddle with it, you piddle a little more like this. 
here's the piddle. And then you go, that painting's ready to get out of here. I'm so excited about this painting. Um, noodle doodle fiddle piddle. It's all the kind of rules that I've done from uh, the last 207 days. Pat, in her organizational style, has been keeping up with those. So I'm going to have to hurry and do this painting real quick because it's almost 10 o'clock. It is where some people live. Here's how I autograph my books. Uh, when you get a book from me, if it takes a little longer to get it, it's because I'm stacked up on the art bar downstairs and I go in and do that. So I do a little grass under here. I do this um, I do this paintbrush here and I do rue like this and I double that rue and then I'll sign it right here, Michael. So if you order a book from me, um, 21, uh, this is how it's going to come to you. It's going to come to you with... Uh, with an original painting in the front, just put in as quickly as this right here. Boom, boom, boom. Really rough, really loose. A little red spot right there. Um, I'll take some uh, French blue and just let the feathers go in. That's why I didn't draw them in. I just said, let them go, go where they want. Come in with a little of this yellow here that I mixed up for the legs. Put that in. Here we go, Terry Tardy. <laughs> I think what I might do is add a little turquoise right here, which is what I always do. That's kind of what this turquoise was originally for. I wanted it to, uh, I just wanted it to splatter in there like that. And then I want a little bit of green right here coming across and a little touch of it here. I want the yellow on his beak. I'm gonna wrap this up here in just a second. Watch this, let it just come down a little bit. Maybe touch of, Halloween orange. I kind of like orange and blue together. Don't you? Don't say that because I grew up in Tennessee, not Florida. A little more red just for that. And one more spot of blue. Maybe a purple piece because somebody said they like purple in there this morning. So there it is right there. So there is my painting. What will I do in a second? When it dries a little more, I'll come in right here and I'll put in some grass and I'll put in some detail in here. And I'll say two somebody's going to get that one and I'll send you a little note. So that's how I autograph my books right there. So you're going to get an original in front of each book that you order from me. I just got 15 or 20 in from the publisher two days ago. So that's why I'm letting you know they're here. Sometimes you have to wait on them. They send them to me in blocks. So they can, you can get them from Amazon quicker. They have to ship them to me and then I pay for that. And then I pay to ship them back to you. But you know what? I want your grandkids to have one. I will find my recording of me and the grandkids reading this book and I will repost it uh, maybe on the, somewhere on my site so you can go in. You, uh, see if you can get it now. I don't think you can. It's on another link. I'll put the link out there so you can find it. Okay. Uh, Pat Brooks, I hope you're feeling better, my dear. Thank you so much for being on the show. Margie, I didn't say hi to you. I don't think. Chris Young, I think. I bought a couple books. And thank you for that uh, little testimonial, as they say. Uh, okay. I have my Rue book and Charles. Oh, you have Charles Mackesy's. Wow. Hey, Mackesy's book is uh, it's a it's a trendsetter, man. It's it's one of the best books written in the world right now, as far as I'm concerned. Charles Mackesy. By the way, that dude is an artist and a half. Hey, blessings to you all. I love being here with you. It's Saturday. I got to go get to work. Thanks for liking my show. Thanks for sharing my show. Thanks for telling your friends about it. It helps me on Facebook. I'm going to finish this painting this morning. Um, this one's finished. I'm going to finish this one, I think. And before the day's over, I'll put them up for auction. And I'll start them really low. And then you guys, if somebody wants a, it's a 9 by 12 um, uh, be, be nice in a nice frame. And uh, be nice if, uh, you know, okay. Um, all right. Can I... All right, get the book. All right, thank you very much. Blessings. I love uh, having you on the show. I'm out of here. I'll see you. I'll see you. When will I see you? Monday, I think. Yeah, I think I'm painting Monday. Okay, Lord willing. Carol's going to be on the show in the near future. Um, somebody asked, she's got to have on her 18 bracelets. So. <laughs> Blessings.